Welcome to Lesson 5, Modeling Getting Started, of the Getting Started series. In this video, we will cover the creation of erection views, construction lines, toolbars, and modes. I would like to mention again the importance of an accurate model. There is an expression, garbage in, garbage out, which appropriately applies to creating models. I will begin by opening the modeling module for SDS2. You'll be greeted with a prompt screen when you enter for the first time into the project. I will name the view underside of base plate. This name will also be what appears on the title of the 2D drawing. This name can also be changed in 2D. Next is the elevation in 3D space. I'll enter the underside of base plate elevation 992. With SDS2, when entering imperial values, you do not need any quotes or special keystrokes for the dimension values. The system automatically interprets anything before the hyphen as a foot value, anything after the hyphen integer value as an inch, and anything after the space behind the inch value as a fraction. For now, I will leave the view type as primary. You can look at the help button to determine the different types and results. Next, a vertical and horizontal dotted line will appear and a large green block. To remove this green block, select the color TV icon on the top left called Display Options, and remove the check from Terrain. Finish by selecting OK. For this first view, you are looking in a plan view. This means the Z direction is in and out of the screen. X is horizontal and Y is vertical. The dotted crosshair lines that appeared are called construction lines. They are lines that extend infinitely in either direction and also act as a plane in and out of the screen. Their only purpose in life is to allow you to select intersecting points. They're similar to node points that some softwares use. Construction lines that are added by you are seen only by you in your modeling window. They can also be saved for future alert use. Construction lines will be discussed later on. Now for a brief look at toolbars. Commands and programs can be launched from several locations in SDS2. From the drop-down menus, icons, shortcut keys, right-click menu, and mode buttons. Aside from the drop-down menu, all these options are fully configurable and can be saved. Along the top of the screen you have the drop-down menu. These will contain all the commands that exist in the modeling module. You will notice that there are letters next to some of the commands. These are the configured shortcut keys. On each drop down menu you will see the help button which will explain all the commands in help for that drop down menu. If you hover and highlight over a dotted line on the drop down menu you can left click and tear off the menu. If I hover my mouse over any icon, an information balloon description field will appear indicating the commands. At the top left of the screen, you will see what is called the Button Bindings Display. By default, SDS2 has loaded the Select Items mode. To return to this default mode, all you need to do is select the Escape button on your keyboard or right-click Return with your mouse. Escape will cancel whatever you're doing and it will also return you to the Select Items mode. In some situations, you may have to select Escape several times to get back to this default Select Items mode. So what is a mode? A mode is several commands that are grouped together under a title and executed by using your mouse buttons. Take for example the Select Items mode, which is the default for both Modeling and Drawing Editor. This mode is the one that you'll be working in the majority of the time. Looking at the Buttons binding icon on the top left, we see that the Select Items is the loaded mode. The white, yellow, and green boxes represent each mouse button, and the command that will be executed is written within the box. Note that you do not select these boxes. They do not react to selection but are just informational. The left button is select. If you press and drag the middle button, you will pan. The right button will launch the right click menu. So we see we have three commands at our fingertips. Now when I press and hold the shift key, 
Three more commands are exposed for my use. Add the selection using the left button, rotate using the middle button, and clear selection using the right button. If I press the mouse button while holding the shift key, the indicated command will be executed. If I hold the control button down, we see three more commands are available. Remove from selection, surface, and clear selection. To execute, select the appropriate button while holding the control key down. You have nine commands at your fingertips. Actually, 12 commands because you can select both the shift and control simultaneously. Three more commands are available, but most modes stick to the nine. By the way, modes are user configurable. I will demonstrate the escape to clear a mode by right clicking and selecting the navigation mode and escape to get back to the default select items mode. While in the select items mode, if you use the scroll wheel, you will zoom in and out to the pointer location. To the right of this button binding icon is the status line. This line will tell you what to do next after a command is executed. Other important fields are current elevation, very useful when you are in a plan to know your Z elevation. We are currently at 99.2. The XYZ display, great to determine if you're selecting the correct point. The view display, to remind you what view you're in. Depth check, filters, and the list goes on. Now I need to add in what we call erection views. As stated in earlier videos, with SDS2 everyone is working in real time on the same model, and you do not have to save when you perform an action in the model, except for the creation of erection views. Remember, this is why there is no undo in modeling. Erection views are used to create the 2D drawings. The save views looking down on the X and Y axis are for the plan erection views, and the save views looking at the Z axis act as the elevation or grid erection views. Before I begin creating these erection views, I will need to create construction lines so that I have some intersections to select. Construction lines need to be created with two points. It can either be a selected point and an input angle or a perpendicular point. The only exception to this rule would be an offset. The two points do not represent a start and end point as in the case of a line, but a location and a direction for the construction line. From the Model drop-down menu, I will expand Construction Line and select Add. You will notice that some icons will become active. These are called Point Locators, or as some call them, Snap Points. If you go to the Locate drop-down menu and select Help, then select the hyperlink next to the icon, you will get a full step-by-step -step description of what that Point Locator will do. As beginners, do not use the Auto Point Locator and Model. This functions like OSnap, where the point will snap to one of the selected locate points in the group. As beginners, we need to learn what each point locator will select. For my first construction line location point, I will select the arrow, which is free point, then locate on my screen with my left mouse button any point. Then for my direction of the construction line, I will select the free point again and locate on the screen the next location. I am still in my construction line command. Notice that the first point locator from the last construction line is remembered. I will select the first location point again and I will see the second point location is remembered. The point locator memory is important since each input command will remember the first and second point locator used previously for that command, such as BMAD or COLUMAD will remember the previous point locators used for each of them. Notice the system still remembers the loaded command. If I were to escape or right click return, the command would be unloaded. I'm going to select the angle point locator for the first point. When I hover over the construction lines with the angle point locator active, we see the degree of the construction line displayed in the XYZ display. I will change the first point to intersection construction line and use angle for the second point. When I left click on the screen after selecting angle, a dialog box opens that allows me to type in an angle and then select OK to complete. 
After I hit Escape, I return back to the Select Items mode. From the drop-down, I'll select the construction line Erase and remove the construction lines I added. Right-click and select OK to complete the action. Time to start to add in construction lines to create points for our erection views. First, I will use the construction line Add with an intersection construction line locator to show in the XYZ display the location of the crosshairs. We see X equals 0, Y equals 0, and Z equals 99 too. Escape to clear the commands. When starting a structure, if you do not know where the origin coordinates for the project from the BIM VDC coordinator, it is always a good idea to start to structure in a positive upper right quadrant with the bottom left column of the structure at the X equals 0 and Y equals 0. This will make it easier to translate the model on export for BIM coordination if required. I will add in construction lines where my elevation views or grid lines will be located using the base off a of construction line point locator. Now I have the intersecting points established, I will move on to creating my elevation erection views that will act as my grids. Selecting the new view command in the file drop down menu, I will select two points using my intersection construction line point locator. After the first point is selected, you'll see an arrowhead created. This indicates which direction the erection view will be looking. Also, first and second selected point will be the distance that you'll see in the erection view for both 2D and 3D. This elevation view I will call A. The in and out will determine how far you'll be able to see into and out of the screen. This applies to the 3D model as well as what will be detailed in the 2D erection view. I'll go ahead and add in view 3 using new view. I will use the base off a of grid line locator to finish the rest of the erection views. Before I continue, I'd like to mention that members added are not dependent on erection view. Members can be added without creating views, and if views are removed or moved, the members remain as they were. Now I will add in new plan erection views. Using plan view in the drop down menu, I will input the floor elevation of 114.6. Looking at the current elevation display, we see that we now have moved up to elevation 114.6 in the model Z direction but we are still in the underside of base plate view. I want to save this view as an erection view. From the file drop down I will select the save view as which opens up the same dialog box we had at the beginning. I will type in second floor and then OK to accept and close the dialog box. We have now created an erection view at 114.6 named second floor which can be used for reference and creating 2D placement drawings. One more time, I will create the roof at elevation 126.0, select Save As, and name it Roof. To open the views created, select the Open view in the file drop down and double click on it. You can use the icon, or you can right click to open a view. Finally, under the file, you'll notice that we have a delete view option to get any unwanted views taken care of. This now concludes the end of this lesson.